All right, we're going to do something just a little bit odd, but we'll keep it as a scientific problem that might occur and leave it at that. So what we're going to do is change the base mesh. Okay, What happens? At a very low level, a change isn't bad. At a high level, a low level would be inserting an edge loop. That's not bad stuff. Inserting an extrude, however, pretty hurtful, but we'll look at that. First off, I would say bake all your layers. You don't need them anymore. Uh, I would uh, delete all more targets. Okay. Also, let's go down in levels. And then store a morph target. This is for maybe a problem that occurs. We'll see if that problem actually occurs. It's always different. And actually, I'm going to end up capturing that again. I want a little change in the polygon structure right here. I want an edge loop in this area. We could do this in ZBrush, but I want to show you what happens in a third party program. So delete lower, store morph target. export. We're going to call this test for OBJ. Other things you should do is maybe clear all pivot points. This is all just basic stuff, sorry. Clear all pivot points, get rid of all layers, get rid of anything that might be damaging or throw off point order and then export. All right. So, now that that's all gone, but I still have my high and low, let's see what happens. Let's go into Blender and then import our wavefront object. Let's test object 4. You probably only want to do this in an area that doesn't have a whole lot of detail because it will be quite bad. In this case, I'm just going to hit extrude. E. That will put an edge loop in that area. Do I want to make much change after that? Uh, not really. I'll, I'll kind of live with it. Well, I'll make it a little bit smaller. Not much. A skosh smaller. If you need to change across several faces in a weird order, it's called inset, by the way. It can be found using inset typing that in. Also, you need to turn on the plugin for inset, which is here, inset polygon. But if you're just going across two faces, that's not bad. Also, while I'm here, well, no, one change at a time. File, export, wait for an object. Go to desktop, we'll go to blender, and we'll export this as wave for an object. Down below, I'm just going to say apply the modifiers off. UVs, keep that on. Materials. Anything that looks weird to me, I turn off. Scale is one. Export it. And then let's go back to ZBrush. First off, you should probably clone the device and then append it. That way you always have a backup. This one is going to be our base. We're not going to change it. This one's the one we're going to use as our science project and hit import and import the way for an object for. Do you want to change the topology and transfer all the high res? You hit yes. I want you to attempt it. Again, edge loops are easy. Extrudes, on the other hand, very different. Sort of hard transition for ZBrush to understand. Especially in the areas of high detail. 
So I'm just going to put that out there before it looks like junk. Okay, so let's look at this. Again, I have two meshes here. I have this one and this one. Actually, it did a really nice job. I'm surprised. Again, because that area does not have a whole lot of detail, it worked out quite well. So what can I do now? I can lower this down. Let me get rid of the mask. Let me go one higher. You notice it's having a hard time transitioning between levels. It'll do this all the way through because, you know, I changed that underlining geometry. Well, I could go like this now. Hit Shift and Control, and let's just have this one area showing. Shift and Control, Alt to hide. Shift and Control, Alt. This is a little, you don't have to do this. This is just one of these things that I want to show you why I would do something like this. Okay, so here, I'm going to raise this all the way up. I'm going to hold control and click. Shift and control up. Now I have a very succinct masked off area. Well, what can I do with that? First off, I will inverse this as a mask. You notice it's quite verjackety though. See? Look at it. Verjacketyism is in effect. So I'll undo that. I'll blur that mask a little bit. I'll probably have to remask it. I will. The, the moral of the story is I can now mask off that area before I couldn't. And I can see why it's a little jacked up in that area. If you look really close, I have some polygons that are over the top of each other. To kind of repair something like that, we'll need to go down a couple levels and just smooth out that area. Now it's good. Again, you would have to redo the entire process of capturing that one little small area. I'm going to do this area. It's going to be a little easier to show. Just that one area. Hold control, click anywhere, shift and control anywhere. Now I got that little area. I can inverse that. and I can deflate it. And you've seen this procedure before. You know, I can do whatever I want in that little area and it'll be different than all the rest. So, you know, this is nothing new. I'm looking for surface, which I always seem to lose because surface, the the little palette for it rests between two. There we go. So there's my noise. I can up the noise, make the noise bigger, strengthen it. And I can apply that mesh right there in that one area only. So that's the advantage of having a quite a sharp edge loop in an area because in that one area I can make very succinct change happen. But in the long run is it worth it? No, nah, not really. You know, I could have probably done the same thing with uh, a few minutes of the masking tool. Other than that, that's how you do something like that. In the long run, it's worth it. In the short run, I could do that very quickly using a mask tool, but there it is. Enjoy. Let's go on to the next video.